Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video. This is Shan Magaraj. Today we are going to talk about very important topic called land value management. Very very important quantitative technique you know explained in uh, project management standards given by you know PMI USA right and we are going to see you know what is land value management how it is applied in you know traditional approach first and then the same uh, earned value analysis how we are going to apply in Agile also we are going to see that right so there are two steps process we are going to learn today one is what is earned value analysis and how is this being done in traditional projects management processes and then how you can apply this in agile world also we are going to see that it's very very important video please carefully listen to it right let's first understand what is EVM right so EVM is meant for earned value management right what is does it is a performance measurement analysis technique right this is a quantitative technique which is used for measuring the performance of a project right what it does it measures and it forecast and it's giving an input for you to continually improve the project performance so you're going to measure using some methods and you're going to forecast how is the project performance in future and how we can improve the project performance what it does again it is giving a feedback on the project's current status compared to baseline right you are planning some cost some kind of a schedule right you will understand what is the cost variance and what schedule variance in terms of earned value right that's that's one of the very important aspect of EVM and it also provides insights into the future performance right that's where the forecasting and further insights to the future performance come into the picture right so we need to before we you know uh, 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 dive deeper into and analysis right we need let's understand what are the different terms we are going to discuss right so there are you know uh, four or you know five or six or seven eight terms you need to understand right so what is let's start with plan value right we are using a term called plan value what is it plan value means the authorized budget assigned to the scheduled work also called budgeted cost of work schedule okay i'll give an example let's say you are in uh, into an erp implementation right it's a 10 million dollar project which needs to be completed in two years right so first year you spend five million dollars and second year you're going to spend another five million dollars so what is the planned value of this particular ERP implementation it is 10 million so the budget cost of work schedule right it is scheduled for two years of 10 million dollars so the 10 million dollars is the planned value of this particular ERP implementation right then the next term is earned value the measure of work performed expressed in terms of budget authorized for that work also called the budgeted cost of work performed okay so we know that the planned value for first year of year implementation in our assumption is five million dollars right let's say that in first year uh, we are expected to complete five modules and the next year we are expected to complete another five modules let's say that right but as the project runs in the first year you are completing only four modules you are planning for five modules but you are plan you are completing only four modules so what is my earned value is four million dollars assuming that each module is you know uh, spending around one million dollars right the first year planned value for five models uh, five modules is five million dollars but what you completed is for uh, four modules then your earned value is four million dollars so your plan is scheduled for one year you you expended all the one year but you delivered only four modules instead of five modules the planned value is five million dollars the earned value is four million dollars actual cost what is an actual cost the realized cost incurred for the work performed during the specific time period okay so let's assume that you know you plan for five million dollars and you earn only four million dollars but 
you know you have to spend 6 million dollars for actual cost right you would have added a new resources you would have added a couple of you know foreigners to give a translation in japanese and you know canadian french uh, french right so it, it could have added that so actual cost would have gone up possibly right that's the actual money spent on that one year of period is called actual cost right budget at completion the sum of all budget established to be or performed that is 10 million dollars right 10 million dollars is the budget as completion planned value for first year is 5 million earned value is 4 million dollars actual cost can be 6 million or 7 million dollars it can be right so what is the cost variance cost variance is equal to earned value minus actual cost right so in this case 4 million dollars minus 6 million dollars that means you are overshoot by 2 million dollars right what is schedule variance schedule variance is earned value minus planned value right what is the planned value 5 million dollar you earned only 4 million dollars 4 million dollars minus 5 million dollars you are you no know, your schedule is behind of 1 million dollars behind right that means you are behind of two more months kind of cost performance what is cost performance index it is earned value divided by actual cost So it should be always better than one. If it is greater than one, your CPI is doing good. Similarly, schedule performance index (SPI) is equal to EV divided by PV, right? EV upon PV. So if it should be always greater than one, so the project is in success mode, right? So SPI is greater than one, you are doing good. CPI is greater than one, you are doing good. If it is CPI and SPI is less than one, or the cost variance and schedule variance is negative, so you need to do some kind of improvement. Right, that's very important. Let's understand the forecasting uh, formulas. There are three formulas. You no know, PMI is giving is estimate to complete, right? The expected cost to finish all the remaining work. Okay. So in our case, right, we planned for five million dollars of work, but we executed only four million dollars of work. What is the estimate to complete? Budget is completion minus earned value. Budget is completion is ten million dollars. Earned value is four million dollars. That means you need addition of six million dollars to complete this project, right? So there is another formula: BAC minus EB divided by CPI. What is CPI? CPI is the variance of between actual cost and earned value, right? Considering that you are supposed to You know, uh, earn five million dollars, but you earn only four million dollars. But the actual cost is six million dollars. Four by six is the CPI. So if I dividing by that variance, you will get the exact estimate to complete. If you are not considering the variance, BAC minus EV is the answer for estimate to complete. What is estimated completion? Estimated completion is actual cost plus E to C. Right? In our scenario, actual cost is six million dollars. The expected to complete is another six million dollars. You are going to have twelve million dollars, you no, know, to complete this entire project. But what you planned, what you started with, is ten million dollars, right? So that's how the EAC is getting calculated. And variance at completion, budget at completion minus estimate at completion. It should be a positive value if the if the project is performing. BAC is ten million dollars in our case. EAC is twelve million dollars. But what does it mean? You are spending two million dollars addition to it. right so this picture is giving you a very clear idea in a graphical manner right let's say that in x axis you have time in terms of months it can be in terms of iterations right 1 2 3 4 5 months 11 months of project and you have money spent on the y axis there are three curves we are we are uh, putting here one is the blue color is earned value curve right it's kind of all the curves will be kind of yes x curve actually. most of the time the 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 graphical representation between time and money will be always kind of a s curve right if the red color is actual cost the black color is the planned value curve right so that's where you know uh, you are drafting all the three curves here let's i want to understand or i want to do an eva ev analysis or earned value analysis at the month of at the end of the sixth month right so this particular portion the difference between uh, red color and blue color is a cost variance right the difference between the actual cost and earned value so here let's say that you are having you know uh, 5 million dollars here you are supposed to spend 7 million dollars 
right? You earn only seven million dollars, but what you spend is fifteen million dollars around. So that's a cost variance. So similarly, this is the planned value. Let's say that you are planned for you know ten million dollars of work, but what you earned is the eight million dollar, right? This is called schedule variance. So this difference between you know the red color and you know if you if you forecast this particular curve. The forecast comes like that. You know, this is what the estimate at completion, right? And uh, if you look at the planned value, this is the BAC. The difference between the EAC and BAC is nothing but your, you know, a slippage, right? So this is variance at completion, and this is expect to complete, right? This is EAC, right? So this picture gives you a clear picture of, you know. What is the uh, forecasted value of in terms of ETC and ES? Right. Let's take one very quick example. So I'm, let's say I'm working on a project one. I have a budget of fifty thousand dollars. I'm planning for five modules. Work packages per module is hundred work packages. If you know work package structure, you know of a PMI. The unit in which we will measure that each work package one says work package, right? So there are you know hundred work packages being you know planned in five module, uh, one module. The what is the total work package is five hundred work packages we are planning for ten months, right? For one module we are going to spend two months of hundred work packages. So let's look at you know actual. Uh, In terms of money terms, what is BAC? Fifty thousand dollars for you know end of the project till end of the project. What is the planned work pay uh, work packages in the first month? You are planning for fifty because total five hundred first month you want to complete fifty work packages. What is the actual work package completed? Forty. So what is my planned value for month one? Five thousand dollars. What is my earned value? Four thousand dollars because I planned for fifty work packages. But I I have done only 40 work packages. So what is the uh, uh, difference? It gives you thousand dollars of you know, work of work is not done. What is the actual cost? Four thousand five hundred dollars. It's an actual money you spent, right? Now if we calculate all the uh, uh, required things in EV analysis, we start with cost variance. We are short of five hundred dollars. That means we spend the five hundred dollars addition to that. Right. In addition to that, because we earned only four, <coughs> sorry, we earned only four thousand dollars, but what we spend is four thousand five hundred dollars. Schedule variance. We are supposed to complete a work of worth of five thousand dollars, but what we done is four thousand dollars, so we are short of thousand dollars. What is my CPI? EV minus. It is. It comes to eighty-eight percent. What is my SPI? It comes to point eight. It is point eight. Right. So it is kind of eighty percent. So this project is, you know, it's running in uh, a loss. We have to improve our project. What is my estimation? Uh, estimate to complete BAC minus EV divided by CPI, right? Which comes to fifty-one dollars, you know, fifty-one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. That means you need addition of fifty-one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, right? More to complete this project. If you don't want to consider the variance, this could be the, you know, forty-six thousand dollars you need additionally to complete the project. But it's always a good practice to include the variance because you are anticipating, you know, the CPI is going to continue. If you are not, if you are not anticipating CPI, you are uh, in future are going to complete a project as scheduled. Then you need, you can calculate it this way. You can have both, but better way is better accurate value will be is, you know, including your CPI variance material. Then, what is expected uh, uh, at completion? Actual cost plus E2C, right? Actual cost is now four thousand five hundred. We're adding to it, so you are going to spend fifty thousand to fifty dollars in addition, right? With variance and without variance, you can calculate. So variance at completion six thousand two fifty. So you are running a project of, with a loss of six thousand two fifty dollars. So similarly, you can do this process a month on month. Right, you can calculate it and you can forecast accordingly. You can do the improvements. You can uh, get the insights and you know continuously improve, take actions to improve on this uh, process.
right so this is how the eva is giving you a quantitative information on your current value right compared to your baseline value and then how it performs it gives in terms of cpi and spi and it forecasting in terms of etc and eac right it gives a very very good wonderful idea what is the amount you are going to spend in future right so now coming to eva in agile how i'm going to you know, implement the same earned wave analysis in agile right there are two levels you can apply this eva in agile one is at release level and one is at the sprint level so we can calculate eva at every release and you can calculate eva at every sprint right so what are the simple formulas for spi actual story points completed divided by planned story points it's called spi the planned value is equal to bac into sprint number divided by total sprint so similarly at sprint level you can calculate it so let's look at the same example for you know, agile this is an example of agile eva analysis at release level then let's take the project two my budget is fifty thousand dollars my same my modules are you know five modules i want to complete story points for modules thousand uh, hundred story points i want to complete per module and total story points comes to 500 story points and total sprint is 10 sprint i'm planning right one sprint per month or we can calculate it right according to that so same way we are calculating right what is my budget is completion fifty thousand dollars what is my planned story points in the month in the sprint one 50 story point what is the actual story i'm completing 40 story points it is nothing but a velocity planned velocity is this actual velocity all right what is my planned value five thousand dollars right bac into sprint number divided by total sprint because i am planning for 10 sprint first sprint i am planning for five thousand dollars right so every sprint you know it is you now five thousand dollars is being planned for spend what is the earned value four thousand dollars because your you you your velocity is only 40 instead of 50 so you are earning only four thousand dollars what is actual cost four thousand five hundred dollars so similarly you can calculate it you know this is the same value sprint on sprint right the same way we did for the traditional approach you can do it on sprint on sprint right instead of work packages i'm using the velocity as the very important one so very very simple process you can apply it at release level right similarly let's take an example at sprint level right let's take another project you know in a particular sprint right what is the budget of the sprint five thousand dollars how many business days ten business days in a within a sprint that means two weeks of sprint story points per day i am planning to my team is planning to complete five story points per day my team is uh, trying to complete uh, 50 total story points within the sprint my team size is five team as a five member team right so how i'm going to calculate at sprint level same five thousand dollars per sprint i'm going to spend planned story points day one is five actual story points as i've completed is four and you can calculate the planned value and accordingly all the variance information so similarly you can calculate a planned story points for every day every day second day 10 third day 15 20 25 then you can calculate the actual values accordingly you can do one day wise as well so this is how eva can be applied at both at release level and sprint level my suggestion as an agile coach should be it is it makes more sense uh, to do the EV analysis at a release level, right? For sprint level, you can use the burn down chart. That's a much more better chart to use in a burn down chart. That will be, you know, very easy to understand compared to this is maybe a, I would say that it's a more of a work for you as a project manager, as a scrum master. You may not be interested in doing this EV analysis on a daily basis, right? But if you are having or want to have a detailed information, if it is a many, uh, if it is a, a project is a very uh, cost intensive project which you want to do a day day one tracking uh, day wise tracking you can use this ev analysis done at you know a sprint level but my suggestion personal opinion is we can do ev at release release level and we can use burn down chart at sprint level right so with that we are come to a conclusion of this particular video hope you enjoyed this video Please put your comments, you know, and start liking the videos and put your comments on their feedback. What are the changes you're looking at? What are the different topics you would like to have it you know, in Agile series? Okay, so this is my uh, third video on Agile series. I hope, hope I'm going to give more videos for you. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your time today.
Thank you so much. Bye-bye.